Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Pick Your Brain Podcast, a platform to showcase creatives, social issues, mental health, and community empowerment. I'm Simone. It's your boy Kyle. What up, Kim folks? It's Mike D. What's good? Muy buenas noches. Me llamo Jonathan Mendoza y bienvenidos a Pick Your Brain Podcast. Por favor. <laughs> Get him. <laughs> hey. He's cultured. I'm just kidding. Fat. I speak <laughs> Spanglish. <laughs> All right, so today's episode is about representation in media. And by media, I mean books, television, movies, and all of that. So yeah, we're, I'm pretty excited about this. Are you guys excited about this? That's a good one. Why is that? Why are you so excited about this specific because, topic? Because, as maybe you guys know, I don't know if you guys know, but I have been reading a lot lately. I actually finished The Color Purple, by the way. Oh, bro, I'm still at 150 whatever. Page. You need to catch up. It's okay. <laughs> 150 it's fine. whatever. But um, yeah, and I was like, I was like, nowadays books are doing good with like you know representing a lot of um, different people and different from different cultures and stuff. But then I was like, but well, why do I still find myself having to search for books that are that have a Filipino female lead character and like. I have this app on my phone called Likewise where I like search up, um, what's this called? Search up books and stuff. And like they actually had a whole section on it. But then I was like, why is this like kind of so hard to find? You know, I'm like, eh, maybe we should, we need more Filipino characters, you know, in media. And I was just, I was just thinking of social media, not social media. I was just thinking of TV and books and stuff. And I actually saw this thing where it was like, where, when was the first time you guys felt like you were represented in media, like growing up and stuff like that? And I like really got thinking, I was like, huh, that's interesting. So yeah, that's where the idea came from. And yeah, I'm excited to speak about it as a Filipino American. So yeah. I think for me, like, you know, the things that I've watched uh, growing up, I think I've always kind of attached myself to the closest <laughs> because there wasn't actually a Filipino, a lot of Filipino in movies or media, or whatever have you. Mm -hmm. But I attached to like whoever's the closest or the coolest or the person of color. And that, that's the, the character that I can see myself in. Mm. So, but yeah, I think, you know, representation, rep, representation does matter, matter because, you know, it helps empower people to, you know, achieve a specific goal yeah. that they can be and that they are, you know, they are important, that yeah. they are, you know, seen as a human being. And so, you know, a lot of people go to str uh, struggle with a lot of things. And again, representation, representation matters, but it's not the only thing that matters. Mm -hmm. There's a yeah. lot of things that matters too. That part. And so it's not necessarily the primary thing. Yeah. But again, de depending on where you're at, yeah. and especially if you're a, a youth uh, looking to find yourself, your identity. Because, you know, as a, as a young person, that's what we do, right? That's what we do in terms of like trying to find ourselves. We, try, we, we see something that we like and we attach ourselves and we try to emulate and then until we emulate other things. and So we make it our own. And so that, you know, for the youth, it does, uh, it is important in terms of representation. But again, depending on where they're at, in terms of their consciousness, the level of their consciousness, because sometimes, you know, you know as, a, as a youth, you can talk about like, oh, yes, representation, I want to see myself. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you might not be aware of the struggle of your own family in terms of like rent, in terms of wages, livable wages, or like uh, healthcare, all those other issues. So those are things that matter, again, so depending on the individual, where they at, and their, their level of consciousness. So yes, representation matter, but there are other things that matters too. So yeah. Mm -hmm. So what do you guys feel about representation? Like how do, you, how do you view representation? Do you think it's important for media? Like how do you think the media is doing right now with representation? You want to go, John? You go, bro. Oh, oh, oh go, thank go you. Off thank you. I'll go after you. Um, I would say, yeah, representation matters a lot. And what I like about nowadays is that representation is being made a bigger deal, you know what I'm saying? And that has its own like pros and cons, right? Based on the approach. But it matters because, you know, we 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 grow up and you know I'm I'm going to speak for like my generation, right? Like, you know, including you, Simone and Kyle, um, 
Actually, Mike too. Uh, um, <laughs> but hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry, sorry. But like, you know, we grew up watching our favorite cartoons, watching our favorite superhero movies, watching our favorite whatever other icon movies, right? But it was always like a white person, you know oh. what I'm saying? That was always the protagonist. And, you know, it as when you're young you don't really think too much about it yeah. but you know what i'm saying when you start seeing politicians are white the president is white your superheroes are white your teacher is white police officers are white other public servants are white it's like you know when you start thinking about that it's like well where, where's my place yeah uh, and then you know kids start saying oh okay well you know and i'm just going to use this as a for the sake of an example right like oh our school's janitor is mexican the kitchen cook is Mexican. So maybe that's where they, you know, maybe that's where they belong in society. And so kids aren't able to discern to a full extent, obviously, the complexity that is society, but representation matters because once they start seeing, oh, my teacher is Latinx, right? Like in my community, right? My teacher is Latinx, my principal is Latinx, my professor is Latinx. It's like, no, there, there's a higher there's a higher calling for us, you know, and it's like, we're not just, you know, going to fall into the same pattern of stereotypes. And that's also, you know, adding in there, that's also what stereotypes get generated. And that yeah. in of itself is a whole problem yeah. <laughs> in of itself, to say the least. Yeah. Uh, I think it does matter a lot. I mean, growing up and shit, you know, I, 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 all I remember was like Wendy Wu, right? Brenda song. Uh, I remembered uh, the yellow power ranger. Uh, I remembered, um, just very few people. I think Dante Bosco and Tim. And but then yeah. I think the biggest surge really hit and during the YouTube days with at least the Asian American community. Mm, yes. That was like Wong Fu Productions, Nigehiga. There was uh, a Timothy Delaghetto. You know what I'm saying? And that really brought rise to the industry for Asians. And as a yeah. creative myself, being a DJ, a poet, you know, seeing people like Dante Bosco, Timothy Delaghetto, just up there, it really inspired me to do something that was out of the norm. You know, I mean, right now I am pursuing my education, but in the past, I really did think uh, music was going to be my career. And I feel like right now, at least for the music industry, we've came such a long way in terms of people like Pilo, uh, 88 Rising, uh, to her, right, Saweetie, being them, uh, ha having them being half Filipino. I think it's just so crazy how we've exploded in the industry and we came up. Yeah. And um, not even with that, but even through like movies such as like Crazy Rich Asian shit. Mm -hmm. But I feel like it is important for people to have that role model and that inspiration to be kind of out of the norm, especially yeah. for Asians. I feel like there's always a set standard of what they want you to be um, in terms of parents, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, too, you know, I do agree with Mike. That shouldn't be the only thing people should be primarily focusing on in terms of full freedom and liberation for people. I mean, but in terms of society, it is such an important thing to see that representation in the media. Yeah. Yeah. And I like how you brought that up about like where like the background comes from and stuff, because um, a lot of people are saying like Brenda Song in Sweet Life of Zack and Cody or um, I forgot her name, but she was in Camp Rock. She was like one of the mean girls, best friends or something. But I didn't really see myself in them, although they were like Asian it's because the kind of characters they played, like Brenda Song played a dumb Asian rich girl. And then the girl in Camp Rock also played a dumb ditzy side best friend. And I was like, I, that's not, I don't see myself in that, you know? True. And you're no, you're no side chick. <laughs> Thanks. And, and, Wait, Mike, um, Mike, you, Mike, you gotta slow down, bro. She's about to throw the SZA album out here, bro. <laughs> SZA album. <laughs> but yeah, so then it's like, you know, but one thing that I really did like, um, a show that I watched was Degrassi. Like, if anyone knows that show, it's like a Canadian show. Drake was in it, like the old, mm -hmm. old Degrassi. There was this um, girl that played a Filipino girl, and she's actually Filip half Filipino in real life. And her last name was Santos in the, um, in the show. And I remember a couple of episodes, it was focused on her and her family. And it was really, like, portraying the typical Filipino family household that just like you know is trying to conform and trying to like have their daughter be the best and stuff like that so like I didn't really see myself in her because you know obviously different family circumstances but it was nice seeing 
my people in a show like that and represented and represented in a way like that, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. One of my uh, favorite artists in terms of hip hop is uh, Jay Z mm. and Mob Deep. And yeah. the, besides the their great artistry and their talent uh, as a hip hop uh, artist, it's because also they mention the word Filipino mm. in their music. You know, like JC had also had a line like "looking half black and Filipino." Mm-hmm. I was like, "What?" You know, like I was, <laughs> I felt like I was like, "Yo, like I, I was recognized, yeah. I was accepted." The, even the word Filipino is like, "Yo," at, at the moment when That's I was me. Young, like, you know, yeah, 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 I'm Filipino, yo. yeah. And the fact that I was even mentioned <laughs> like that word, you know what I mean? And even like. Mob Deep, like the line was like Filipino got mad ice. I know it's a wrong content. This kind of ice. Yeah, true. yeah, you know, <laughs> different kind of ice. ice. <laughs> different kind of ice. But the fact that you know, even the word Filipino, growing up and like looking for that someone to identify with, mm-hmm. and the fact that in the hip hop it was mentioned, even just the word made me like, oh. Yeah, made me like what well, that's what those what, what those are the things that actually really made me like deep dig deeper into them. So like hip hop, yeah, and learning more about hip hop. The fact mm-hmm. that you know folks could be you know the fact that the fact that like artists can mention you know Filipinos, yeah, is something that I really wanted me to delve into it. Yeah, and actually I was watching a documentary with Jay Z, and he was I think he was talking about how like how in all of his music and all of his songs he does mention like his culture you know being black and he makes that prominent in each one of his songs and I think it was like I guess people were saying like oh he just recently started doing it and stuff like that but he was like no I've been doing this you know since the start and I thought that was really cool that he like makes it prominent in in his music and I think a lot of you know artists do and as a person who was in the dance community from a very young age you know in, from my perspective, hell of Filipinos ran that shit, you know, Jabawakis, um, I don't know, I don't know who else, like, I, Poriotics, are they, some of them Filipino? But, like, the dance community is, like, predominantly run by, like, Filipinos and, like, Asians and stuff, especially, like, in the Bay Area, you know, with mm. all the, um, urban dance groups and stuff like that, so I really felt at home with it, I didn't feel like I was, not represented because a lot of Filipinos were dancers, you know, and I think it's a good step to to that. But like, what like I guess I want to like focus on is like, okay, like now like obviously a lot of people aren't going to be dancers growing up and stuff. But what about let's pop them in a TV show? Let's pop them in as a you know as a principal or this or that. You know what I'm saying? So even with the DJ yeah. community, I feel like Filipinos ran it too. There's yeah. DJ Qbert, Shortcut. Maz Medina is crazy. I, I, a lot of the time, I feel like Asians, for the at least in the hip hop scene, were kind of in the background in terms of the dancers and the DJs. Mm-hmm. And then slowly, for those who like paved the way, like Timothy De La Ghetto, Bamboo, um, uh, Pilo, they all paved their way in their own specific. Roscoe O'Malley too. Yeah. That's even like a throwback if y'all remember yeah. him, right? They yeah. all kind of paved the way very slowly. It's, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I think for the most part, you know. Filipino or anyone is capable of being anything that they want to be. You know what I mean? And so, yes, it helps to like see ourselves that, oh, other people are doing it, so that means I can do it too. So, mm-hmm. but, but in essence, you know, representation uh, falls in line of identity politics. You know, so identity politics, you know, that's something that people could talk about, like, oh, your, your identity, your representation, all those things. But in essence, like, you know, within the identity politics, the, you know, the economic issue and the social issue and the political issue is never addressed. And, you know, they, you know, it's, it's like, you know, in the same way the Democrats are in the same, you know, are, are pro-corporation, pro-corporations, but they're more into in terms of identity politics of, you know. And so, like, that's the dangerous part of, like, you know, like the Democratic Party. Like, you know, we as a people can keep them accountable in terms of making sure that they do the, do right for the community and not just play the identity politic game in terms of like, you know, like having the right in, in a, uh, people of color in, 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 in a specific industry, all those things, but actually 
like addressing like real issues of economic yeah. uh, inequalities and you know all those things so so yeah yeah that's something to keep in mind in terms of identity politics so again it's great to see ourselves yeah the 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 in in, in a position where we want to be but in essence anyone especially our people yeah. are capable of anything and we can yeah. be if the right, right situation if the right economic situation if the right political situation is there and that's something that we have to continue to fight for mm -hmm. in essence you know back to the community organizing that's something that we hope to fight for yeah. to create a, a system where everyone have access yeah. to resources to actually make it and to, to be able to live happily you know? so yeah yeah and I yeah. like how you brought, sorry, did you want to say something? Oh, go ahead. Um, I like how you brought up like representing, you know, the struggle of people and stuff rather like it's more than just like showing like a person of color on screen. Cause I think for me, one thing that really stood out was when I was watching That's a Raven when I was young and mm -hmm. I forgot what episode it was, but she, she goes through something and she mentions like, Oh, but why? but well, why are they treating me like this? Because she was black. And like, it just run it, ran it down through why and stuff like that. And I thought that really brought a light to how, you know, how they live day to day. And they, people can see that even people that, are, that aren't black, that are, that are not, you know, part of their culture, they, they can see how, how that happens in daily life. And they could, you know, get a certain understanding for a certain people in your community, you know? So yeah, a lot of shows growing up, I feel like had like little moments like that, but it's like a really good start. And that being said, what shows did you guys like to watch when you were growing up? What certain oh, shows? Oh, Jonathan, did you, did you have to say something? Oh, yeah. So I mean, so, touching upon Mike, uh, Mike's point, the fight for justice and equality it is complex, but it is an ongoing struggle, and although. Let me put it like this. Representation matters because if you're on screen or not, but it also matters how you're portrayed on the screen yeah. too. And that's something that, you know, I've witnessed growing up, right? Because whenever my parents would like get a DVD, yeah, Blockbuster, bring up, bring the stock back up. Oh, no, the but, stock. Uh, <laughs> um, Be kind, no, rewind. But, you know, whenever, you know, get movies from Hollywood Video or Blockbuster, right? It was always like Machete or something like that. And, Who's the bad guy? You know, the Latinx character. Who's the drug dealer? The Latinx character. Who's the eroticized female character? A Latinx in these movies. So representation matters to be on screen, but it's also like, how are you portrayed on the screen? And although I'll give it to you, Mike, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not just that, you know, there's more to it. And that's the thing, you know, there's obviously more to it. Um, and I think that to a certain extent, representation matters. And it's a good, you know, like section of the fight for justice and equality, because I wouldn't be where I'm at today, nor, you know, in my field of studies, if it wasn't for representation. And my biggest, like, moment of motivation came for representation, but not from film or movies. It was literally having my first Latinx professor. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with this professor, um, with him, you know, I saw, oh, Latinx people can be professors. And I saw in him just this vibe and this energy and this push. And, you know, on top of everything that we were talking about and, you know, I was like, wow, that's insane. Like, I never would have thought that, you know, I could be something like this potentially. And, you know, I was at community college, barely trying to get my, you know, associates transfer. And, you know, I'm over here talking to this guy, you know, and he's like, yeah, I got a master's. And I was like, Latinx people can get masters. So, you know, in that sense, representation you know, really matters because in my case, it motivated me. It gave me a drive to really continue pushing forward. Um, hopefully I'm graduating this spring and I'm planning on applying to grad school, but even now Sorry. I'm already thinking like, oh, maybe I can do a doctorate, Ooh, uh, you know, hi. maybe. And if it wasn't for representation, I would have never gone down this route, you know? So go. it's like, it, it's something that I hold very near and dear because 
like I said, I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it wasn't for, you know, this professor who I took, you know, at De Anza. So what was the question again, Simone? Um, So so growing up, what were you? What were your guys' like favorite TV shows, movies that you watched? What did you like lean more towards? I loved Rush Hour. <laughs> One of my most favorite movies. movies. I know. I mean, I know Jackie Chan doesn't truly like represent like us, uh, like Filipinos as a yeah. whole, but just him being Asian as a whole. That, that was the closest thing. thing. Or like, oh, like just in general. Was, so was that just in general, what TV movie? shows? What? I, I am me and you Rush Hour Three. Yeah, the <laughs> show the Hidden Dragon. Oh my god, or something that was like so that. funny. So that was that. And it's so crazy how he was it a Grammy or Emmy that he won like just what a couple years ago. That's just so mm-hmm. fucked up to me. I forgot. What, did they, the movie stars usually win Grammys or Emmys? He barely won. I thought you win Oscars. No, oh, Oscar. an Oscar. Yeah, he only, he only won <laughs> like two or three years ago, and that, and that's when he had gray hair. I'm like, what the hell? He deserved it a long time ago. That's one. Number two. Just in was, general, not but, in like. Just yeah. like what you watched in general. Batista in WWE. I was like, oh shit, he's oh. a big ass Filipino. <laughs> and he he kicked ass too, except mm. just the way he quit in WWE. Mm. I didn't like that. Yeah. But other than that, he was amazing. It's oh yeah, dude. Th- I remember going over to Kyle's house. He had a whole ring. He had like a little toy like oh. wrestling ring and all the action <laughs> figures just stacked on it, bro. Oh my god. <laughs> What about you? What what shows did you watch? Well, what like movies? the shows that I watched growing up, just in a general sense, you know, I'm not not like picking which ones are like that I found that I like, you know, represent rep- represented me. But like, you know, I watched Hannah Montana, Sweet Life on Deck, or not on Deck, Sweet Life of Zach and Cody, but on Deck as well. Um, That's a Raven. I would wake up early in the morning and early in the morning to watch Saved by the Bell, Family Matters, um, Penny Proud. Proud oh, family, that's proud right. family. Um, what else? I answered it wrong. Yeah, Not yeah. Bad. That's why I was like, because like what I was trying to lean on to say is like, look at all the shows that you have watched and like, in how what's the percentage that you see yourself in any of them? Because oh. you know, growing up when I was younger, I didn't really think think of it, think of anything, mm-hmm. think of like you know like oh like let's say one of the characters that I admired was like Raven, Raven Simone, like I admired her character, how she was like, how she acted and stuff like that. She was very like, like, no, you're not going to treat me like this and stuff like that. And like, love that. And parts of myself I saw in her too, but like not in that sense. And it it didn't really cross my mind about like being represented as like, you know, a Filipino American and stuff like that up until I watched the, um, trailer for raya and the lost dragon what was it mm, yeah and that's when i felt like a rush inside of me and i was just like whoa like this feels good like i could see myself in her and seeing like her doing the arnis and all the stuff that they incorporated in the movie i just felt really good because i was like wow that's my culture and i feel like it's important because even though kids don't consciously look at that, when they do see it, it just sparks in their brain and it just makes them feel good. That's why I think it's important because although they don't think about it, you know, they don't think about it consciously, um, it's still good to have that feeling and to expose them to that. Like, hey, Uh, look, there's a movie about you. You know what I'm saying? I'm definitely going to watch that. It's Raya. I didn't yeah. see it. Yet. Right? And, but the beauty... It's not, it's not out yet. It's just the, um, the trailer came out. But there's a beauty in terms of Disney's... Uh, Princesses? I, I, what do you call it? Uh, promoting the, the idea of the marketing aspect. Because it's, it's not necessarily a Filipino thing. Yeah. It's, it's a, a Southeast East Asia Asian. thing. Yeah. And so imagine it's not specific, and so it like yeah. it covers the whole Southeast Asia yeah. or being represent represented or the feeling of represent. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean for us specifically, there's this the cultural identity of the arnis, the mm. the, the the martial art. You know yeah. the the specific uh, uh, what do you call it weapon? Yeah. You know, so there's there's those things that make us like yeah, it makes you excited yeah. about like yo, that's me. That's like that's us. And so, yeah, you know, I, I get that and I get excited mm-hmm. too, you know, especially 
uh, doing work in terms of as a brand who got uh, especially for like it's a is is it's about like Filipino culture and that's something that you know and to be honest you know that's one aspect of being able to sell something is that you have to like emotionally grab someone and mm-hmm. to be interested in in the culture yeah you know so but yeah yeah that's part of the marketing aspect you know when t- when, it, when it comes to gut i definitely go beyond the identity and i hope to make sure that people are educated in terms of their own history and not just feeling good but actually look at the hist- history yeah. of our people you know the idea like when i first learned about the lano manos mm-hmm. you know like if we talk about Filipino Americans in California, like the Delano uh-huh. Manos was part of the biggest labor uh, fight in U.S. history, and it is led by Filipinos alongside with the Mexicans. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think sometimes we we you know we forget the idea of like that we matter and we have contributed as Filipinos here in the U.S. in yeah. terms of the things that you know the work that we've done, like the Filipinos from north to south of California all the way to, like, Washington have played a role in actually developing the land in terms of the farmlands. Because Mm -hmm. in terms of the gold rush, the gold rush was like, you get gold and that was it. In terms of the plantation, in terms of the different uh, farming things, that was a year in, year out. That was making money. Uh Yeah. That was worked and, you know, like, break, uh, you know, people's back in terms of like Filipinos labor and, and Mexican labor that, you know, that really developed the land in California. And so those are something in terms of representation as Filipinos in America, our contribution, you know, to the U.S. So just knowing history matters in terms of understanding our contribution and our importance. And also like, you know, that empowers you that you can, you can be something and you can fight for anything and you can be anything. And so that's, you know... That's I know that's you know that's the the idea of re- representation that it empowers you, yeah. but you know I just I hope to challenge people that let's go beyond the representation yeah. and check out the you know see the economic and the political uh, struggle of our people. So yeah, and we're back with our sponsorship. So this podcast today is sponsored by Smacklax Bandcamp Free Edit Pack, y'all. Let's go. Woo! Let's go. So if you are a DJ DJ or someone that lo- just loves music, anything from EDM to footwork to Latin to hip hop to pop to even R and B. So diverse. Let's diverse, right? <laughs> Check it out on our link tree. We're gonna put Smacklax uh Bandcamp a free edit pack right on our link tree on our Instagram. So make sure y'all give us a follow. I at PYB Podcast. Smagalag. Let's go. I just wanna add in one thing. If, if you go to that link, that van camp link, you're just going to find a whole bunch of random edits, all right? You know, they, some of them be hidden. A lot of them be hidden. But, you know, it, it's just going to be a lot of random. You'll never know what you're finding in there. I'm always adding in uh, new edits, too. So let's come nice. check them out. Check out. 3.99. Let's go. Yep. Yeah, you know, um, and did anybody else watch Wow Wow Wubsy? Yes, the I what? Wow, wow, Wubsy, and my little sister loved it. Wow, 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 who? Wow, wow, Wubsy. It was just like little yellow dude who like used his tail to hop around places. Wow, wow, Wubsies. Wow, wow, Wubsy. You know, growing, you know, growing up, right? I, I watched the Wow, wow, Wubsy. I, like, wow, I watched I Love Lucy. I watched Mash. You know, like an American. No, I was kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, I was pretty much like a Disney kid too, Nickelodeon kid. Um. You know, some of the shows you already mentioned, Sweet Life, Zach and Cody, Wizards of Waverly Place, Hannah Montana, um, Good Luck Charlie, um, and then, you know, Nickelodeon, iCarly, uh, Zoe 101, Drake and Josh, mm. uh, Victorious, that sort of stuff, you know, and uh, I also loved watching, you know, some some other like cartoons, superhero ones, you know what I'm saying, like Teen Titans, um, Spider-Man. You know, and I really felt that Batman, you know, just really connected with me because, like, you know, with my primo cricket, you know what I'm saying, and our other primo <laughs> Joker and Riddler, you know, it's like, Joker? you know, we just Joker. all connected, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Food, like, you know, rest in peace to my homie Riddler, you know. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, no, um, yeah, those are some of my favorite shows. And I think the point, uh, going back to what Simone, you know, mentioned, right? 
I watched all these shows and as a kid, like I didn't really see much else to it aside from, oh, that's funny or wow, that's cool. Or wow, I want to punch somebody's ass like Spider-Man. Uh, and so, you know, but right in front of our faces was like, yo, this person is white and I'm a churro. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a, <laughs> there's a disconnect on the, you know, on skin color and representation. So, yeah. Yeah, and to kind of hop off of uh, what Mike said with political representation, first off, no roots, no self. No roots, no self. I, that, mm. that, that one always hits. Um, and, you know, for me, right, I got into activism um, after high school. And I took a lot of classes. I took ethnic studies classes, which learned about the indigenous people. Um, I did a lot of research about the uh, black struggle and black liberation in America. And I knew a lot about that. And it was so wild. And then one day I was going through my class at Ohlone and there was a motherfucking Asian American studies class. I'm like, what the hell is this? You know what I'm saying? So I took this class with a Vietnamese American professor and that shit just blew my motherfucking mind. Like, I became so empowered with oneself and so proud of myself as an Asian American and as a Filipino American. I was like, holy shit. Like, this shit was just crazy. And I was so empowered. And I saw political representation in what we studied. We learned about the Delano Manongs. We learned about Yuri, o- um, uh, Yuri Okiyama. Shit. I, I hate, I'm, I'm just hitting my head right now. But Yuri o- uh, Okiyama, she actually was the person who held Malcolm X's head when he got shot. We learned about Richard Aoki, who was a Japanese-American that was in the Black Panthers. We learned about all of these people in these organizations who fought for black and brown liberation and even um, the Asian liberation, in a sense, right? And Mm -hmm. it it just made me more confident, and especially in my role in the community, because as a Filipino-American, you know, I was the assistant secretary and then became president of the NAACP Youth Chapter of San Jose. And, you know, I was put in situations where I was the only Asian person in there, but I became confident because I realized that we shared a lot of intersectionality and our liberation tied together. And because of that, I became confident in this fight for liberation on a political, economical, societal level with uh, as an Asian American. You know what I'm saying? Because... You know, that representation really made me realize who I truly was and what my place was in the community. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and one thing I just want to plug in real quick, you know, I'm saying like when we're talking about representation and and the fight for liberation and social justice, you know, a big shout out to the Filipinos because the UFW, the United Farm Workers Movement, would have never come into full fruition without, you know, Filipino workers as well. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. Respect, respect, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I think... You know, in terms of like, we touched on in terms of like, yes, it's good to see ourselves in the media, but it's, you have to question is how are, how are they representing us, yeah. Yeah. right? And so if it's, if, if it's going to represent us fully, we really have to look at our own history of our people, our, the people's history, mm-hmm. not the history that has been re- rewritten for other people, right? And so yeah. we have to look at our own history to be able to see the representation of our people that, uh, that continue to fight for uh, you know better better uh, future for our people you know so so the idea of like learning about the Delano Manongs mm-hmm. the International Hotel you know all the struggles of our community that people fought for it and won that's that's in, in essence a representation that we can achieve that if people are fighting for something that we can also fight for the current issues yeah. that we have that we face and that we can come together collectively so that's in essence also a representation and so yeah yeah that's that's i mean i mean that's something that really like that really shook me in terms of under, like what led me to the community work is learning about the katipunan it was a revolutionary uh group in the philippines for fought that fought for the spaniards and in essence, like that's an opportunity that I've learned to like understand what does it look like, what is colonization, what is imperialism, and what is the current struggle that continues from that day, and what are, what am I, and what can I contribute to be part of change in mm-hmm. our community and, and generally in the world. And so, yeah, that's to me like that's my representation that matters to me. Yeah, it and was I, Yuri Kochiyama. I'm so sorry for the <laughs> listeners, good. just in case they get at us. Yuri yeah. Kochiyama, rest in power. My bad. It's also a uh, no history, no self. Yes, yeah. yes, sir. Ah, and I dope. feel like too with that, um, you know, I became 
so interested in like my culture and stuff, pre-colonial, pre-colonial times in the Philippines and stuff. So I decided to do some research and search some things up and find out a lot about myself. And in that way, I felt so empowered. I was like, damn, we're pretty dope. Fat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And um, that leads me up to my next thing. It's like, uh, I was going to ask you guys how you guys think you what advice you give to like certain creatives that are of people of color um that are getting into the fields of like um in television movies books authors and stuff like that because for me it's like we talk a lot about you know like going back and knowing our history and stuff like that and knowing uh where we came from to better represent who we are because if you look at who runs the show who 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 creates stuff, who, um, who's in that industry, it's predominantly white people, you know? And that's why for my friends that are creatives and who want to get into that industry, you know, whether it be music, um, television, movies, author, as an author, it's just like, keep going, you know, keep pushing because we need you. We need you to, as a representation for us, you know? And it's like, it's like, you can be the you can be the change in that community itself you know like you you can be the person who has the history has the knowledge and allows it to be seen by younger generations and even old gen- generations that don't really know their history you know so i think that's a huge message message i have for them is like keep going you know uh so little background so being in the industry in the bay area there's so much creatives and a lot of the ones that i know are actually asian american mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying um so i did actually two shows or not two movies that's actually getting really oh one of them was supposed to be pitched to a24 and me and my boy who's also uh asian as well too we were like the uh, people partying in the garage during the hyphy movement. And, <laughs> and, and then, no, it's crazy. No. And then the, the, sh- the show was about a Vietnamese American who navigates to San Jose during like the 80s and 90s, mm. or during the 90s, right? Yeah. And there was this other, sh- uh, other movie called Americanized. And basically, it's about this uh, Asian girl in Oakland. So it's like a different uh, Asian perspective of how to navigate through the American life, right? And how she basically grew up in the hood. And she's just trying to get through school while doing uh, basketball as well, too. Right? And I actually uh, was one of the just the side characters just dancing on the side. Right? He was and, an extra. <laughs> I was an extra. But, <laughs> but it was there. And yeah. uh, my point is with this is the co-producers were Asian. The directors were Asian. Like, a lot of people were Asian. Mm-hmm. Right? And with a lot of these creatives who navigate through that world, they did it on their own and they did it independently. They created their mm-hmm. own shows. They created their own production crew. You know, you can do it on your own as long as you put your mind to it. If there's a will, there's a way. Mm-hmm. A lot of the shows that, you know, I hosted around here as a DJ throughout the Mopitas area, I found it for myself and I did it on my own. I didn't wait for nobody else to give me that opportunity. So basically, like my biggest advice is just seize the day and make it your own thing because you can do it and you can go above and beyond yeah. these white people who ruled the industry in a sense because you know they will never understand your perspective your perspective of the asian experience might be so much more different than theirs and that's on my mama you feel me yeah and it's like it's very unfortunate that like we we don't have the support of like big industry the big industry and stuff but at the same time it's like pave that way you know pave the way (sighs) if if there's no one to help you push push through push through and get through it and make your have a platform make yourself have a platform to to showcase what you believe in and right right after that it's like a it's a snowball effect for sure you know i think if anything for me if i wanted to sh- uh, something i want to share uh, for anyone uh, especially in our community uh, is one is to really take the time to learn about themselves and the history of their people. And that, in essence, can be like the spark, in essence, to be able to represent yourself. It's one thing to just represent as Filipinos in terms of the surface level of just being Filipino, eating the food, and all those things without understanding the real deep history of our people, our victories, and our struggle. 
And so that's what I would recommend, like really learn and dig deep down in terms of understanding our, our history, our culture, our struggle, our victories. Then that's, that's where you can able to represent uh, as, a, as a Filipino in anywhere you go. Because, you know, at times, like, you know, we, you know, America is, is uh, definitely, it's not an ethno state, you know what I mean? It's like a multi-ethno state. And so, and, and it's a struggle in being able to represent ourselves, you know, especially in the business and something that, you know, like even in the art, because art can be a business, right? And the struggle of trying to balance the, the business aspect of it and the art of it. And then the, and the idea of representing yourself in, in a place where, you know, the, there, there's fear of like it might not get accepted. And so that's, you know, that's something I struggle with, like, right? So I do a Filipino culture thing and I represent like Filipino culture, you know, but then there's a struggle of like, you know, the business aspect of like, does that, you know, the fear of like, is that going to get accepted by other people or is this just for Filipinos, you know, versus like, for me, like, I hope to like be able to educate other people about Filipino culture and history and our struggle. And so that's where I try to like really balance as the balance aspect. But definitely I'm always representing because, you know, that's something that I uh, definitely took the time and taking the time to learn more about our people, to be able to have a message and to be able to tell the stories of our people. So other people can be empowered in terms of, you know, representing in essence, right? So, yeah, that, that would be my, my message to people. Like, really, like, learn about ourselves. And sometimes, you know, just join the organization that are actually talking about, you know, the political and the economical and the social aspect of our, of our people. So, yeah. Yeah, and uh, in the words of Frederick Douglass, agitate, agitate, agitate. Going uh. to Simone's point just keep pushing through because people in our communities walked so that we could run, mm -hmm. you know? And so, because if you think about the industry, right, if we're talking about just the film industry, when you compare movies from 2010, 20, 30 years ago compared to now, it's like there has been a huge change. Yep. And it's because people in our communities walked so that we can run. And so I think... We also have to be aware of this thing. Although the executives and the owners of all these film companies and all these distribution companies and all this stuff, although they're white, on one hand, they won't promote a certain type of story because they may think it's too radical and all this sort of stuff, right? But at the same time, because the industry is changing and there's a lot more acceptance in society, slowly brewing, right? There's also the concept of wokeonomics that they will just jump on a trend because it makes money. And although we might be glad that, you know, oh, there's more representation, and that sort of stuff. Um, we also have to be a little bit critical too and aware that, yeah, for example, like Nike, right? You remember the whole Kaepernick uh, advertisement? It was sort of like, yeah, they like jumped on that trend and that sort of stuff. But at the end of the day, yeah, you had conservatives and all these other people who were throwing like bitch fits because like, oh, how can Nike do this, blah, blah, blah. And it was sort of like, yeah, that was like a good stance on Nike. But at the end of the day, did they really care? They just wanted promo, bro. They just wanted money. And they jumped on that woke economics because it was like, oh, well, you know, we can get more leftist people to really jump on this. So it's just something to be mindful of. Um, because for us, it is great if we can get representation, but it's also like, it's not just the actors um, or direct directors, right? Like we have more actors and directors of, uh, of color, but at the same time, it's like, if you really want to change things up even more, you got to start hitting the tops too. You got to oh. start hitting the execs. You got to start having more owners of film companies and all this sort of stuff to really bring about change. Because as Mike said, right? representation matters and if you take the time to know your history and other people's histories and cultures that'll give you more knowledge right and you can start depicting films that tell different stories from the ones that we're accustomed to but because we have this hindrance because we're not the execs because we're not the owners right we can't always get what we want and so if we start getting at that you know what I'm saying? Then we can start, you know, having films that we want, that we like, not mm -hmm. just like, you know, kind of what, what they will Curated, give us in a sense. Yeah. For sure. I think, yeah, yeah, corporations definitely have a tendency to co-opt a specific movement, 
mm. you know, like, and like a great example of that is Pride. Pride right now are like slowly turning into like a corporate thing that's happening. And in actuality, no one is learning about the real history of Pride and how Pride got started in terms of the Stonewall riot and who, who, who fought for it and what, you know, what were the reason why. And so those are really important. And so, yes, there's corporations called opting movements in terms of representation of a specific group of people. And so, yeah, that's something that to keep an eye on for sure. So dream big, y'all. Bigger than your biggest dreams. Yay! Guess what we time it you, is, though. We need you at the top. But it's the absurdity of the day, so... <laughs> absurdity of the let's day! Let's line up a little bit, you know? Hey, hey, hey. So who's doing it? Ja. Jonathan? All right. MC Churro. Churro. The absurdity of the day has been brought to you by Univision 14. Noticias a las 7 p.m. a las 11. Um, oh so, how many of y'all like cats? Cats? Ooh, I'm hella allergic, bro. Like Hell what? No. Cats? That's unfortunate. Like meow. Kind of yeah, cats. Yeah, cats are dope. Did you know cats are allergic to people too? Oh. Absurdity of the day. Absurdity there you go. The See you guys next time. Oh. Bye. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst crickets ever. We need Wait, is that was that it? Yeah. <laughs> or, uh, he knew it too. Wait, you, were wait, you really? Did you all switch it up at the same time or something? Wait, was that it? That was it. Yeah, that was that, that was the absurdity of the day. It's that cats can be allergic to yeah. some people too. Oh. So yeah. Oh. I have another absurdity of the day. Okay, go ahead. Okay, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. 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 I just Marvel. seen Soul, but I, you know, it's I the seen Marvel Soul. Universe. So there was actually a, a a character from Palawan. I'm just saying in Soul. <laughs> so I put that out there. Representation, Palawan, Filipinos, you know, Soul. Oh, yeah. that Palawan, from, uh, by the, the way. It's Palawan. <laughs> oh, that's my bad. It's okay. I'm surprised. Our, our, I'm sure the other didn't lead into a Star Wars conversation. <laughs> Dude, let me tell you. you. She was about so to. She was about Dude, to. Dude, that's what I was so rare. <laughs> Because in my mind, I was thinking of Padawan. Padawan? <laughs> Padawan, and I Padawan? said Padme. Padme? <laughs> I didn't say Padme, I said Padme. So you watched Padawan. I was thinking of Padawan. But anyways, this week, we <laughs> okay. started school, right? Uh. And for some reason... I brought up Star Wars oh, in yeah. my group I discussion. That that. And it was like... Simone, <laughs> Simone, it's okay. The first step to solving your problems... Is to admit it that you have a problem. Hi, Simone. I'm addicted to Star Wars. <laughs> and then the, the Hi, cashier. Hi, my name is Simone, and I'm addicted to Star Wars. <laughs> and the cashier, when I went to Target the next day, um, I was buying uh, the Harry Potter series because I never ha- owned the books. And I had a conversation with the old Filipino lady, and then she was like, oh, you know my kid likes Star Wars? <laughs> so we also had a conversation about Star Wars then. It's okay, like, Padme. It's, it's okay, Padme. It's okay, Padme. And then I said Padme's ro- name wrong. Padme. 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 Anyways. Padme. What's that? Uh, Wait, so that was, going back uh, to what I was mentioning earlier, I've been watching WandaVision, so my... Yo, bro, if you're controlling this universe, you got to let me know. Because how did you know that was going to be the absurdity of the day? <laughs> did yeah, you really look at the same website? Uh, no, I, no. I, <laughs> no, I'm serious. No, it's I, just, I, I didn't even tell I, you. I, no, I was just leading into it. The fact oh. that you said that if the cat was... Oh, if anyone was cast, no so I assume it was the just... No lie. I just kind of jumped in there. What? No lie. All I said was like, how many of y'all love cats? And then Kyle was like, I'm allergic to them. Hardy, heart, heart. And then like... <laughs> and then Seems like, a little sus. Say, wait, like, wait, wait stop. He might kick you out. He might kick you out of this world. world. <laughs> I thought, you know, I did kick him out of Zoom yesterday. So I'll uh, kick him out of my wormhole too. So what happens? So right what now. happens is that he, Jonathan, is sharing the absurdity of the day, and he was that. setting it up in a way that it's about a cat, and he was asking about what? What was that? Who what was the question? Cats. Who likes cats? All he said is, "Who likes like cats?" Oh. And then all of a sudden, Kyle was like, "I'm allergic," because you know he's allergic to everything, and <laughs> and so I jumped in and saying, <laughs> "Humans are allergic to cats, or cats are allergic to humans." Cats are also allergic to humans. And then, and that was the intent that he was sharing, but we didn't talk about it. It just kind of happened. And then Simone is wearing 
uh, something with dogs on it. Dogs and cats. So dogs no. and cats. So no, that means dogs. it's going to rain tomorrow. <laughs> Raining dogs and cats. Raining tomorrow. So no. it was just. Uh, it was just. Uh, it just happened that. Uh, <laughs> Hold on, this looks like this is an episode straight out of WandaVision. Okay, now I freaked out. And then now. before you know, it's going to... And then we're going to talk gonna about go something back, else. It's going to go back to something. Yeah. It's kind of about a rewind right we're now. We're going to talk about right? Star Wars. So that wait, was wait, the absurdity okay. of the day. It's Hope not like It's me. not the topic, but how, I, how it happened. The fact that I was able to guess what he was intending to do. I thought wait, y'all planned it I out. No, that's not plan. Dude, he was right there. Te- no, but I mean, he could have been texting him. You know, no, listen, that, hey, Jonathan, that, let's wanna, fuck this shit up. Make, <laughs> one more thing. <laughs> what? So you know, Simone, you know how you said Kyle's allergic to everything? Yeah, I am. I am. Kyle, do you remember that type like three years ago? You're like, you know, I'm gonna take this test just to see what I'm allergic to and what I'm not allergic to. <laughs> and you came back. You're like, dude, I'm pretty much allergic to everything. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle is like on the verge of death like, every day. <laughs> yes, anything. Test just to find out you're allergic to everything. Yeah. Oh it man. Sucks. Shout out to and the folks. And he has asthma. Like, aw. Yeah. It's, it's okay. okay. At least I can have a variety of them. DJ asthmatic, DJ eczema, DJ allergic to cats. DJ eczema. Wow. <laughs> You said you got eczema. Uh, I make you your got feet itch. I make your feet itch. Oh my god, stop! <laughs> <laughs> I make your feet itch. So that was our eczema. absurdity of the day portion of their episode. Well, this is also the end too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> we did it very late this time. Oh, yeah. I hope nice. you guys liked it though. That was kind of a funny end to it. Inception. 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 WandaVision. Watch it. Inception. Absurdity. Inception. Also, I think Star Wars came out with a new book. Oh, go okay. on, go on, go ahead, drop yeah. it on. Drop it, drop it on. I there. don't know what it's called, I forgot, but I screenshotted it. But anyways, sponsor us. <laughs> Please. Lucas, <laughs> Lucas Films. No, it's not, it's Disney now. But Lucas, but it's still Lucas Films produces it. Right? Yeah. I don't know. But all right, folks, that was <laughs> it. Shout out okay. to all our guests. Shout out to mm-hmm. Astrologic. Shout out to uh, Fit Connection. Shout, Shout out, out to, to uh, Moon Iridescent. Thank you all for guesting. So, yeah, if Shout people are interested <laughs> in guesting, this come through, holla, yeah, what's up? Ah. <laughs> and that's the end of PYB forever. <laughs> <laughs>